myself because PAX 10 was when I got fired from Greenpeace because I couldn't connect with people. So I thought it was something to very learn with me. But you made me realize I can't connect, I connect with my fellow nerds. Yeah. And you gave me the strength to start my own business, make my hats, and you know, just because you can't get in college or your special needs or have, you're not like our nose doesn't mean you can't still succeed. Nice. Jerry, I just wanted to thank you and have a question for you. Um, in the fourth panel for the Mass Effect uh, script that you did about gender issues. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was that, oh, that was about the captain. Right. Yeah, right. The captain's seat, as it were. <laughs> yeah. You was trying to see a theme. Uh, you had, about that. Um, mentioned something in that fourth panel, and I thought it started really good conversations with my friends and family, and I was wondering why you chose to talk about that there and then. Oh, well. <laughs> I, you know, I, I talked about it more, I think, because Mike was so scandalized, and I, I see it as my job to scandalize him. <clears throat> like when, and it's the same way for him. I mean, when he sees, when he sees that, that someone is sore about a specific thing, like it's, it's his natural inclination to pick at that scab. And I have the you know, I have the same thing too. So if you look at the archive, I mean that scab picking is basically our practice. Right? Yeah. If, if there's something that people won't talk about. In fact if you look at last week, like the entire Emerald Dream storyline, quote unquote, yeah. for legal reasons, um, it's it's just more scab picking, right? Yeah. If I feel like there's something that is really obvious and like straight out there on the table, for some reason people aren't talking about it, like, yeah, that makes me really agitated. It is really important to bring up things like that, and it's important to mess with people. You know, when there, there's something that they're so sensitive about. You have to find that. I, mean, I think it's important to find those. I need to step away from that. I think it's important to find those. Oh, well, to like those sort of scenes, right? I think you, I think that. We have, a, we have a responsibility, especially in our position, like, I think we have a responsibility to find those sort of seams and worry them a little bit. Because it's, it's something that people want to talk about, it's probably something we need to talk about. That's been my experience. <laughs> Interesting choice! Thank you. Oh, hold on a second, is that, is that, is that Cards Against Humanity? series, like your first game. God, that would be really funny. So he was talking to me yesterday, I was over sort of at the burning wheel booth, and on top of the table, there's a whole, like, really thick, really detailed role-playing game about being anime maids. Apparently it's awesome. I don't, that was, that was a surprise to me? Yes, it's, it's just ridiculous and amazing, it's everything crazy you could think of putting into an RPG about being an anime. And the weirdest thing is, I introduced people at the table to role playing with it, and they loved it and wanted to do more. Yeah, yeah. Um, I brought the hook back to my room, and Brenda said that she wanted to like play me, but I didn't know what she meant. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to do is I wanted to uh, uh, commend you guys for one of the strips you did on the uh, fake gamer girl. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, no, but, no, but in, in that strip there was a literal fake. That's what I mean. The, the, the literal straw woman. She's made of a room. Yes. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to say that, Gabe, we are surface buddies. Surface pals. Oh, really? Do you guys have a special thing I do with a surface pal? Oh, yeah. here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I love surface <laughs> <laughs> I, I read your review and I was like, that is exactly. 
Yeah, they need to give me a fucking commission. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like, when they do it right, like you don't even know what to do. Oh, yeah. I, like when they make a good fuck, you're like, what the fuck just happened? I have the problem now that I'll sit at my desktop and try to reach up to my screen. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, trained, right? The same thing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm going to pass around to you. Hey, sir. So as we all know, uh, this is the real Pax. But the true Pax. Yes, the true Pax. The Pax good and true. Uh, my friends and I are hoping to write some fine matches this year. And uh, maybe, maybe we have a bit of CC Seattle over there. Uh, do you have any recommendations for things we should check out off the beaten path, you know, aside from normal tour stuff? Well, you know, there's, there's actually, honestly, our normal tour stuff is pretty sweet. Um, you know, like Car Kingdom. You should go to Car Kingdom. Like, I feel like Car Kingdom should be a mecca for a new religion. Like, you need to check it out. Like, it's really weird. It is, it's a place where all the games that they have are like, they have them open on a shelf, and then you can go take those games into a bar and drink while you learn how to play them. And it's the best. Okay, that's it's, a huge, it's a huge plus. But our tourist, the tourist stuff that we have, yeah, no, is pretty big. Like, yeah. like, you know, quite marked and sweet. Yeah, no, I'm not knocking that. It's just, you know, I know how to find that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Or something, you know. Yeah. Card, I feel like Card Kingdom is a must. Um, as far as our cool stuff, it, a lot of people, a lot of people speak highly of the underground tour. Give that a shot. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Hey, what's going on? So, Same this is my first PAX, and I just recently got into Penny Arcade. My buddy loves it, he got me into it. And Thank you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pumped because my favorite part of it is the fourth panel. I love oh. watching the fourth panel, so you guys are freaking hysterical. Well, you listen, you came to the right year. I know. You never did that shit. I, yeah, and you were telling me that this is totally, I mean, you guys said it too. So, um, I'm pumped that there's a Q&A because, and, and I'm especially pumped that there's no text. Because this is kind of a challenge for you, isn't it? So you guys are some of the most creative people that I've ever heard. Talk. I agree. You're like, yeah, now you know, throwing praise upon you right now, but I'm gonna put you to the test if you're willing, if you're willing to try. So you come out to the boss, Rick Ross, uh, every time you come out here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a rapper myself, but I also, but I also, you know, I, I stop. So, how about you drop me a beat, I'll kick some rhymes, and now I'm gonna drop you some, because... <laughs> and then you gotta kick some rhymes. <laughs> and, and to let you know, when, and if you do decide to drop this, this is off the top, I'm not thinking of anything. You're saying it's off the dome. Off the dome. I mean, I, you know, just... Yeah, I can be off the dome. Okay. <laughs> so you wanna go first? No. Alright. <laughs> Then kick me some. Let's do that part of the battle where they sort of like square each other up and. Yeah, we kind of. Can I can ask you a question? Maybe. What, what? what? Is it just assumed that someone musical can do that? What? Well, you're just assuming that you can kick a flow. Well, no, 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 no. no. I know I'm taking a long time, I'm sorry for the other people who want to ask questions, but here, I'll give you a little tutorial on beatboxing, right? I, Super easy, this is how I teach my friends. Two, three words, boots and cats, right? Forget the boots, forget the ass, and keep the mm. So it's boots, cats, boots, cats. And if you just do that, see, so then when you get, then when you get, it's you, You can do stuff like that. So just give me a boots and cats and I'll try to come up with something. And then I'll give you something easy, you know, slow. You're the wordsmith. You gotta be coming up with something for me. Uh, I, I had something that was. I mean, who doesn't want to be a rapper? Everyone. I had it in every person. When I was a kid and I saw, like, I wasn't supposed to watch MTV because it was like secular music. You know what I mean? It was like the world's music. Right? Yeah. But I, but I saw Cool Mo D. Nice. And he said, he just he challenged me. He said, how do you like me now? <laughs> I, I, I do like you. <laughs> I am very impressed with you, Cool Mo D. 
I want more. So, so I, there was a period where I had a fantasy. Maybe I'll be able to put some of that out there. I'm not sure how much of it is going to be audible. That's fine. It's going to be some Chiron-y type shit. All right. All right. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. So you're in a rap second. That's the power position. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Two one loss. Okay. Um, don't worry about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is totally new for me, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. Are you ready? Yes, yes. It's time! <laughs> Australia, okay. and they have a couple 
like a, it's, they're called nano bars. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know, I've been to the website. You know, I, I, I get very excited about that. I think that's totally legit. Yeah, I was wondering if uh, you and Mike had uh, one suggestion each for what uh, you might like to see included. But it, plus the Able is like where you talk about, right? Are we talking about drinks? Yeah, yeah. I extended my drinks are Fuzzy Able. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not true. No? Uh, oh, yeah. I guess no, that's true. The, the last time I was in Las Vegas, Robert had me drink uh, vodka and cranberry. <laughs> so, yeah. So the are these, 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 are, this, these may not catapult you to worldwide star. Sure, maybe like any <laughs> big for, for, for me, yeah, I mean, for me, like, the, the drink, if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna have something, I usually like to start off with Yukon Jack and wine. And it's not, it's not amazing, like, it's more like a, it, it is meant to be and tastes like medicine. <laughs> um, that, that used to be what I would drink when I, cause I used to sing in like a rock band. Not like a rock band rock band, but like a rock band. Like a real instrument. Yeah, it's called, it called the fine print. I thought it was very clever. Um, but that was it's actually a really good tonic. Like it actually clears your throat and then it, it sort of lops off the top part of the stage fright. So it's actually impossible to go on stage. Awesome. Great. Right. Um, uh, also, I just wanted to say, Mike being the consummate artist that he is, he got the uh, apologetic Gabe snaggle tooth in the throat, <laughs> which I love. I'm glad we can offer uh, some support. Right. Thank you. Uh, hey, Jerry, you actually wanted to say Airy Day? <laughs> <laughs> no, because actually, because that song came out before that was the accepted nomenclature, so it has to be Every Day. Okay, so you want... So you want every Day. Every Day. I'm hustling, hustling, hustling. Every Day. One way, one way. Two words? Two words. Two words. All right. And then do you want, is hustling... Is it spelled hustling or is it hustling? Apostrophe. In the song, it's definitely hustling apostrophe. Yeah. So H U S T L I apostrophe. Yeah. And then I'll probably do it maybe maybe do three progressively smaller hustlings. Sorry. I don't know how much information you want, man. But it's every day. Yeah, and every day two words. Okay, but so if you kickstart that rap album, I will throw E V E R Y F O B. Space A, space. See, you need my help, man. You I think you know it? <laughs> you think that every day I'm a pop yeah, dude. Uh, also, uh, my buddies and I played fiasco last night, and it ended with a failed blue industry and a daycare brothel. So I hope it was. Fun. <laughs> so, uh, so in case, we're yeah. actually up here for uh, our third pass, and we want to make it a little different because uh, my buddies get married in two weeks. So we're actually doubling this as our uh, bachelor party. Nice. Uh, well, on um, Thursday night, we kind of called the Poke Bar around and did our own Arkham and Horror themed uh, bar crawl. Nice! Uh, complete with character cards and pistol things, the whole nine. Uh, yeah, it was phenomenal. Uh, we also made an achievement app for PEX. Uh, as in, in the Xbox achievements, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so, one of the achievements, I found out that I'm actually trailing the leader by about 100 points right now. Yeah. And one of the achievements is to hug five PEX employees or enforcers. So I was wondering if you would help me get there get and a little bit closer by giving a hug. I have to take a picture of it for uh, verification. Okay. Yeah, okay. Excellent.
Very simple question. Amanda. I realize I could have looked this up online, but my husband suggested it would be more fun to just ask you. Sure. What does the CW stand for? Oh, I can help you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, okay, so, yeah, I understand. The other, the other person asked me, like, what it was like, like, is this, you know, how would I grow my brand, global, global stage, or whatever. And I'm not going to, it's fine. But at the same time, you understand that it was not our intention. Like, this is all, this was never like a part of the thing. We were just making comics in our apartment. So, when we were making comics in our apartment, we were also a part of a Quake clan. A Quake and then a Quake 2 clan called Clan Walrus. And so, I always signed my posts with CW because that was my clan. Like, that's how I was known. And that was going to be probably the largest group of people who ever read our comic. Would be people from our clan. So, and then I just kept it to remind myself of that, right? So every time I sign a post, I always sign a CWTV. That's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning guys. It's yeah. great to see you again. This is our third pack, so fabulous as always. Um, as you can probably see, I'm currently incubating a tiny person. <laughs> and uh, my husband and I are having a really hard time giving him a middle name. Ooh, okay. I don't want something awful, so don't be me. <laughs> no, no, no. But the way you're naming is, naming is vital. No, that would never happen. This is totally not as kissing. We just really like the name. We're actually going to name him Gabriel. Ooh. But you know what? Here's the reality, is that his handle was Gabriel, but then when he had a son, he couldn't resist. Like, the name is just, he, the name is so great, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. So his name is Gabriel Vega. Uh, but, uh, we need help with the middle name, so if you have a few suggestions. <laughs> oh, so, so Vega's the last name. Okay, I thought you were going Street Fighter Two for the middle name. <laughs> I was like, okay. All right. Blue Claws, you know what I mean? Um, the last hustling. All right. Um, so what, what do you like? What are the things that you're into? Oh, I really have been trying to find something Tolkien-esque that didn't sound completely... Oh, that didn't sound too wild? You, you might be unique without me. I don't want the kid to get his ass beat every day. You know, you can, no, man, you can totally get away with Samwise. <laughs> Aragorn, maybe too much. He's been pushing for Alisar. It's pretty good. I always like the Silder. I named my cat the Silder. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, it, it held true. <laughs> that cat did not give a shit. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. But, <laughs> Brent, do you remember when I had that, I had that huge ingrown toenail? It was like twice the size it should be. Cat just fucking bit it. <laughs> I the cat just bit I fell on the ground and started to cry. I've never experienced anything like that. Oh, hold it. It was gruesome. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know, and Samwise is such a, such a beautiful companion, like, that's, there you go, yeah. That's, this is, uh, Flat Gabe. Yeah, I don't know how, people, how many people are familiar with the Flat Stanley thing they do at school. So my son, they do Flat them. And they flatten themselves. This is my son, Flat Gabe. Wait, he's pulled up for the envelope, right? Yeah, he's traveling all around. And no other kid is going to have their flat person up on stage. <laughs> no, no, just name, names are destiny. Right. Yeah, I mean, I gave, I gave my daughter a, a Q middle name just because she always just have that. Like, she always had that Q in the back pocket. Every time she would fill out some bullshit form, she put that Q in there, like... <laughs> she, you need that. You need secret weaponry. That's the world we have. So, Samwise is a beautiful name and a beautiful destiny. That's that's some real shit. Do the characters themselves actually have middle names? In the entire game? No. No, they do. Because Gabe is Charles oh, Gabriel... Gabriel... something. <laughs> no, they, they have middle names in the, in the game, but they don't have middle names like in the regular thing. And if you go back to the archive, you'll see I didn't want to name them at all. I always wanted them to represent everybody. Yeah. Mike, Mike, do you have a suggestion? For a middle name? 
she suggested she suggested Samwise. Sure, uh, let's see. Um, first name you're doing Gabriel. Yes. Uh, Gandalf. Is that on the, is that on the nose? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I'm not a naming person. I am naming my son after the cartoon character that I already named the same way something like that. Alright, thanks you guys. I'll see you on the floor. Absolutely. Good luck. Sorry, I've, I've seen that process. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so you should totally do a rap battle with MC for a lot. He has been he has been yeah. hounding me to to go up to one of his shows, and I always I, I freak out. Frelot asks him every year to come up on stage and rap with him. He wanted me to do a verse on um, Origin of the Species, which I thought would be pretty interesting. And I, I totally agree. Like I want to do it, but then like a week ahead of it, I always go. Oh, I'm yeah. Oh, can you, can you get up on that mic? Oh, yeah. So you can get my right Yeah. <laughs> so my actual question, my friend who's definitely not here wants to know what your process is for maintaining that fine head of yours, and also kind of rub your head for a good look. Of yes. here? Yes. This one? Yes. <laughs> what is your special I process? I don't know. Do you understand? Like, I hate hair. I don't like hair. Hair makes me so angry. Because I see hair. Yeah. No, I mean, as soon as, as soon as I left my hair on, until his wedding pictures were done. I came home from the wedding and shaved it. I was such a pain in the ass. It is. Hated it. So for me, it's more like attacking the scalp. Like, get out! Get out, hair! You're not wanted here. That's the way I taught myself. Yeah. And may I rub your head for good luck? Yeah. <laughs> While he's rubbing, I'll go ahead and go yeah. there. Yeah, this won't take long. I don't think. How's it going, fellas? Excellent. Um, I just had somebody mentioned Bugjar earlier. Yeah. Um, you just named this strip the Tumblr Arcade Xbox. Tumblr Arcade? Yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, I did have a question. Um, how's the duck video coming along? Uh, yeah, the duck video was filmed. Um, you should say what it is, just to make sure. So, so for Kickstarter, his, his ridiculous thing was that he had to cosplay as the fruit fucker. Right, so he came out. Yeah, he, he he came out yesterday in his costume. Mine was, I would chase a duck and shout your name, <laughs> which was a joke from the Pinarcade comic that we did about Kickstarter. 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 But and so we put it in there as a joke. But then everyone demanded that I actually do it. So it's actually really hard to find a farm that will let you chase their ducks. <laughs> Farms fall through, right? Yeah, too, too far for like, no. <laughs> uh, but we found these people. Uh, <laughs> they were they were an interesting group. Uh, but we went out to their their farm and they had sort of pasture. It was a bunch of fucking nuts in there, and uh, they I, I had a big sheet of you know a bunch of sheets of paper like a binder with names. And for about two hours, I, I went behind these ducks in a circle in the pasture, yelling the names as I read them off the list. Some were like handles, right? Yeah, I thought it would be names, right? So I, I thought I'd be like, Jim, George, Jenny, right? But people use their handles, so I was like, Dark Master 3176. <laughs> Side three, like it was ridiculous, even more ridiculous. And what was great is the, the couple that owned the farm sat there and watched me the entire time. So we don't know what they were getting out of it. You know what I mean? But they're getting something. We, we, we need to be on that. Yeah, it was great. I, I went into there, I was like, I really need to use the restroom. It's okay if I use your restroom in your house. And they're like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. would you pee on the duck house? <laughs> they're like, they're like, yeah, it's right down here down the hall. Uh, don't mind the duck. And I was like, that's a weird thing to say. So I went into the bathroom, I started going to the bathroom, I look over and the tub is full of hay and ducks. <laughs> just watching you? Just watching me just eat. Their bills completely still. They were incredibly impressed. I mean, <laughs> sort of whack whack. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Gross. Who made your costume, actually? It's like a robber. I'm not 
her. I, said, I came here and I was so glad because no one had mentioned it like in the week leading up. You thought we'd forgotten? Yeah, and I was like, whoo, that was the moment. And then, I, and then Barbara said, what do you do? Who do you do to meet me at the, the show office? And what about? And so I get in there and there's a box and obviously, they hadn't forgotten. Thanks for putting out the other Oh no, it was, it was super fun. I enjoyed it. Thanks for being great so far. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is my second PAX, actually. I have a co-worker back at work, and um, while I've been reading the webcomic for a number of years, he was the one who really got me into it enough to actually show up last year when I did. But unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, he kind of has to be a family man, so, you know, mine sort of thing. I've like seen him. Yeah, so, you know, he wasn't able to make it out with me either year. But I was wondering if it would be okay if you guys could give him sort of a hi. His name is Stephen Barnett. And say hi, Stephen Barnett, and kind of give him a middle finger salute and tell him to die in the fire. <laughs> hey, Stephen, hope you die in the fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one thing, yeah. if possible, could I plug uh, my friend who's an author? Yes, that's me. Um, friend of mine, he kind of cut his teeth. Writing books. Um, he's got a couple of books on Amazon right now. Paradise, uh, Blackwater. Um, his name is John Four. So if anybody wants to take a look, maybe try out one of his books. That'd be great. Good. Thanks. Thanks. All right. This question is for a friend of mine. Uh huh. <laughs> With the uh, growth of the pony movement in the last four years, some people really do not like the pony movement. Have you considered changing the name of Penny Arcade to the Pony Arcade and when do you expect to see this happen? No, we have not considered that. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for more of a dramatic no. You're, you're, you're in danger, man. <laughs> Just run. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> what is the meaning to life? <laughs> Which one, okay? Are you genuinely asking, like, what we think, or are you looking for I, I, Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what does Mike think? Uh, is he? You, you can't say more than two. Oh, sorry, he's here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so, so, so far, I can He's here. Uh... I don't know, you need the number, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I would say, uh, doing what you love with people you like. Pretty good. Now, the answer to what is best in life is different. <laughs> uh, good to see you guys, second year. Um, just before I start, a good drink mix that I found is Black Velvet, which is a mixture of champagne and kiss. It is delicious. It sounds smooth. It is like you were literally drinking silk out of a cup. Dark silk. Precisely. Uh, okay, so my first question is to Jerry. Go ahead. What two of you? Who makes the better wheat loaf? And I know that's going a little far back in the no, So you're a better cook probably in general. This is to say you cook. I like, yeah, I actually really like the game. I feel like that's a, a noble geeky pursuit. I agree. Uh, my second question is to Mike. Would you ever think of going to Telltale Games and trying to get Gabe into a game like Mike did with Tycho at Poker Night in the inventory? And if so, who would you want as his voice actor? Ooh. If Gabe was in a game, yeah. who would I want to voice act him? Sean Connery. <laughs> Uh, what kind of game would you want Gabe? Uh, yeah, Gabe playing his Tycho's the Poker Man. So, like, what's uh, this? It's a uniquely Gabe genre. I think, like, um, a beat em up, like a Streets of Rage type, <laughs> something like that. I mean, obviously, that's not really Telltale's type of game. Spider Man game, yeah, fantastic. No, I, yeah, I think a side scrolling brawler. All right, uh, you guys keep winning those internets. We'll try, we'll do our best. Uh, this is a two-parter. Has Will Wheaton even bothered to invite you down to his show tabletop yet? We're not allowed to say. We're not allowed to say. All right. Well, the 
the second part was, assuming he hadn't, as compensation, could you world premiere Thornwatch on tabletop? Uh, yeah, I mean, that'd be up to Will. I, I think that would be really fun. <laughs> I think they, they might have wrapped filming season two. So okay. that, How that would we know fun. that? Uh, oh, uh. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we could also debut it on PATV. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Or you could go see it some, every now and then you run it here, right? I did bring it with me. Sweet. Thanks. I think that, yeah. So I have a question for Mike and an admonishment for Jerry. Okay. <laughs> Last year I came and you were like, oh, everyone should go down and check out the Indie Mega booth. Yes. Thanks. Now I'm out so much money. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a question for Mike. The Surface Pro, I read your post on it and it sounds very interesting. Now that you're able to go around and draw, do you find yourself going outside more and drawing a lot more nature stuff, or has it not affected you that much? Uh, it's, I, it hasn't changed what I draw, but it has changed when and where I draw. It used to be that I would draw the strip for Monday every Friday, because drawing at home was just kind of a pain. I would have to go up to my office upstairs. I have well, it's an exile, play. right? Yeah. But now there have been a couple weekends where I'll draw the Monday strip on, you know, over the weekend, just every, every you know, sit down, the kids are watching cartoons and I'll draw a couple panels or whatever, right? It's, it's changed where I draw and when. Right. All right, and one more tiny question. Are you looking forward to season two of Legend of Korra? Oh yeah, absolutely. I had a lot of fun with it. That was amazing. Sir. Okay. Uh, I want to start out by thanking Mike for my uh, Cardboard Tube Samurai pin. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, I got it from you at the first round of Omegathon, and between being star starstruck and ooh shiny, I forgot to thank you properly. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, when are you guys going to sell the full-size uh, fruit fucker cosplay? And will it cost less than my gaming PC? Which, mind you, was bought in Canadian dollars, so it was like six cents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the reality is that, you know, much like the Holy Relic, like, we're actually going to travel the world with that thing. I mean, I, I think we're bringing that to Australia. I mean, I, I'm on the hook to wear that thing all year. Uh, and then it's coming back to Seattle, so, I mean, we're, we, we, can't, we can't discuss sale yet. Okay, well, thanks. Thank you, sir. By the way, Rex Ready animated series, 2015? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. currently on the, on the docket, yeah. Thank you. Hey, I don't know if you guys can put the comic back up for a second. Oh, put the comic back up? Yeah. He, he might be able to. Oh, they can. Ooga, 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 ooga. <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> oh, my laptop turned off. Well, uh, this being a gaming conventional, uh, I just have a quick suggestion for coloring if you still have time on the clock. The, uh, oh, I still got plenty of time. The, uh, the ends of the, the double sided dildo kind of look a lot like one up mushrooms. <laughs> no, it's a dildo. It's not like a mushroom dildo. That's what penises look like. So I'm told. I've never seen one. I ain't my own. Sir? Alright, so. I have been thinking, it took me a while to think of this, but I was trying to come up with something that would fit into this comic. Because usually people have you draw, you know, little random things all over the comic, and I love that. But I was having trouble coming up, but then I thought of something. You put the hot dog fairy in a lot of comics. Ugh. Yeah. What about a double-headed hot dog fairy? I don't know where she would go. <laughs> Yes, she is a she. I have that cannon for that. <laughs> oh, he's sitting down. That seems like a good sign. Drawing back the first right. Are you on the same? But uh, some people say don't touch it. How many people say it's done? How many? How many people say add the hot dog fairy to the last panel? 50-50. I'm gonna go with your choice. What do you say? Start on. <laughs> no, don't worry, I'll take it from here. Hi. Get in. I just wanted to come up here to thank you guys because, you know, I kind of ran into this call a couple of years ago and um, I didn't really hang out with much people. I was kind of, you know, alone and didn't have much friends and my 
someone, uh, my friend Jocelyn, introduced me to this comic, and it actually got me into a huge circle of friends. Interesting. And um, now I'm you know, not sitting alone in high school and stuff. Like, I actually have people who know me. <laughs> this is a plus. <laughs> so I just want to personally thank you guys, because it really did mean a lot to me, and this is my first pass. Oh, say hi to your crew. I will. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sir. Um, I have a nomenclature question for you. Um, I was talking about Johann Sebastian Joust, my friends. Yeah, yeah. Whenever the move game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which everyone should play today. Around Johann Sebastian Joust is really cool. Uh, but any time I refer to the developers, uh, like something he tweeted or whatever, uh, his name's Douglas Wilson. But this goes for any kind of celebrity or whatever. I don't know him, so I don't call him Doug. I don't say Douglas Wilson every time because that's really long. So we started referring to him as Mr. Joust. And do you think this is an acceptable practice? I suspect he likes that. Yeah. There, there was another human at uh, this convention who did that completely unprompted, so I feel not that alone. No, no, it's totally okay. I mean, I, I think that he's probably really proud. You know, if you make something that becomes a person and then gets you know, inextricably mixed with yourself, I think that he's probably proud of that. Thank you very much. That's fine. All right. Did we win? Did we win the Make a Strip panel? I think we might have. Thank you so much. It has been our great pleasure to serve you. We will see you again tomorrow. Have a good show.